All right, this is the 79 Choi Lee Offshore 41 footer. How much do the slips down here run? Oh, God, they're expensive. You know, you buy the slip permit. Are you familiar with that? Uh-uh. Okay. It's, um... It's not, uh... You have to purchase the dang thing. It's expensive. So, but you're still basically just renting it, right? Yeah, you're still renting it. But you have to pay the possessory interest tax. So you're like the owner. Is that a Santa Barbara thing or a California thing? Santa Barbara thing. Glad I don't live here. <laughs> it's like real estate. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I guess that was far enough so you guys can climb in. Check it out. We've had the boat covered for a long time, so the varnish underneath the cover is actually in pretty good shape. It's got basic electronics. All right. Uh, this is the first, first time I've been on a Choi Lee. All right. I've read a little, lot about them. I hear some people call it, like to call them Choi Leakies. There is a couple of places. There's two right now on the right-hand side. We have the boat cleaner come down here and clean the boat. I noticed two of the ports had a tiny little leak. Now, he might have been spraying the water on really hard. Maybe they weren't tightened down. But there's a couple, two ports that I, I can show you where I discovered it. Go ahead. And that's the original motor in this thing? Yes, it is. Nice Zuzu. Nice big Lazarette. You can pop that aft piece to the aft hatch too, but that's a fair amount of storage you guys need. Let's see what we got here. Nice extra anchor. Chain. Around here, you guys, when we go out to the islands, so your boat doesn't swing around too much. That's why the anchors, anchors are there. Yeah, coming up, so you gotta pick that back piece up a little bit. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's loose. Oh, wow. All right, build manual build. Right. Mm -hmm. Nice and deep. Screwdriver and tighten that up right there. Now, do you know I was looking at the blueprints for these things? Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got a spot right here in front of the uh, mezzanine for a generator. I didn't know that. Is that okay? Well, all right. I did not know that. I didn't know if it was something that you had to have right them. Right here. Yeah, like literally right there. Yeah, exactly. Check it out. Because the engine is down in the solar. Yeah. Right. Right. That's steep angles here. Just hop, up, just hop over you guys. Yeah, watch out the floor is out down here. Yep. A hot water heater? Is that what that yes. is? Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. That's really doing too much good, but and uh, so they have uh, replaced all the hoses and stuff that the survey guy found on the last go round. Yes, and now we're getting into the injectors, filter injectors, injector pump, and uh, and all the uh, hosing for that too. Yeah, you gotta, gotta hold it.
All the original wiring. I would think so. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, these really guys. Outdated. These guys. I don't think did much of the boat because they would use it two or three times a month in the summertime. My boat's on the same finger, you guys. I've been down here since '97. I'm down to the left, and I walked by this boat for 15 years. I never saw it out of the slip. <laughs> Maybe it was out when when um, when I wasn't around. That's not. That's a good and a bad thing, you know. Right. Less used, but not used. Right. <laughs> there's a spare. There's an alternate blue fuel tank, you guys, back here. It's back in this bunk here. And originally, that's we thought that was the fuel tank that we were dealing with. But when we opened it up, we realized it was the. It's like a, it's a, it's up higher, so it gravity feeds down to this tank here. So when you're doing long range stuff, so it's there. You know what I'm saying? All right. It's never been used. It's only this tank's been used. Oh, right there. Yeah, I see. I see. All right. That's the freezer here. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. it, it works. So. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's on. It might be. It is. All right. Not too bad. Got I think they come down and have a drink once in a while, hang out on the boat. That's why. That's about it. And then this would be the refrigerator. Nice, nice and cold. Those two, those, those two ports over there, are the ones I'm talking about that I noticed had a little leak. I'm not too sure. When he was hosing it off with a hose, he, he blasted pretty good. Yeah, it looks like a seal. So, yeah, I think the rubber oh, seal yeah. might be. They're done. That's from the sun beating on it, I'm assuming. That's fine. Nothing too major. I like the layout of this thing, though. So does everybody. Because for, you know, you got two bunks here. You got storage underneath these guys. You got the basement, like, little master here. There's enough room for a couple of people, easy enough. Hanging lockers all up in there. More hanging lockers. Storage under both of these, or just yes, one? Yes, I think so. Under both? Yeah, I think so. Take a look. Uh, if you can, you can move all that stuff around. Yeah, we that, keep asking them to take the personal effects off the boat for some reason. Yeah, it definitely makes it a lot easier to Yeah, through. but you know what, you guys? They've had it for so long, they're so attached to it, it's really hard for them to, to listen to it. I would feel the same way if it was yeah. my... 30 years with this boat, I think. 30 plus. tank right there. Some kind of tank anyway. I think it's water. Water. Maybe it might be holding, but I'm pretty sure it's water. Put that there. So 
John, what do you think? You gonna handle that right there? You gonna partner up on this thing, John? Uh, thinking about it. Just make sure, as long as you don't get something too small. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep the car comfortable with that. What's that? Well, 27 foot right here. Yeah, I was checking out a, uh, up in San Pedro up there, the buddy has got a, uh, <laughs> I don't remember the year, but it's a uh, Pacific Seacraft. Oh, yeah. Orion, a little 27-footer, just plain Jane, you know, very minimalist type of a boat. But they're really good boats, though. I just sold a 37 to a guy that, that uh, was pretty well outfitted. And as soon as we listed it, within two weeks, he was out of San Francisco, and he was looking for that boat for like a couple of years. As soon as they listed it, we sold it. There's not a lot of them out there. Yep. That much is for sure. Damn it. I think I've seen two. One's in Eureka, mm -hmm. and then that other one down there, which they I liked it. I mean, it's... They measure out to almost 40 feet, just everything. But, you know, off the transom, he had a, a, a self-steering wind vane system. He had solar panels on the top. This yeah. guy had set it up to go somewhere and do something. And uh, all of a sudden, his life changed. And a young guy, too. Had to move back east, so he put up for sale, and this guy out of San Francisco was picked up. Yeah, they're pretty nice little boats. They'll definitely take you uh, where you need to go. Yep. But I could just I could see where it'd get a little. I mean, after two or three weeks having to look at his mug that whole time. Yeah, that'd be tough. Yeah. It would be tough. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> my, my, my wife says that to me all the time. She goes, John, you know, after we've been together, we've known each other 18. Since we're 18, I'm 61. We've been married for. 25 years, but we were my best friend's girlfriend, but we knew each other. She was a doll. She still is. Great gal. But she really wants, she goes, John, you know, I've been looking at your ugly mug for this week. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Time to change up, I guess, maybe. Yeah. John, what about yourself? What are you doing down in San Diego? Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> That's what brought me here. So. Oh, okay, great. But, yeah, I just got a job working at Lord's Shop right now. All right. Oh, so you're back east too? In oh, Alabama? Yeah, Lord's. Yeah, yeah Royston. I was born in Columbia, South Carolina. My mom's a southern gal. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I grew up on. And I like to tell everybody the south is a good place to be from, inferring that I'm no longer there. <laughs> Yeah, everybody cool. hates the black people. No, wait, how's it go? The white people hate the black people. The black people hate the white people. And everybody hates the Mexicans. Oh. I'm like, damn, man. Can't we all just get along? Rodney yeah. King style. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I grew up on black eyed peas and cornbread and turnip greens and grits and eggs. Oh, man, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I miss it. I'm definitely down for some Waffle House since you said that. For what? The Waffle House. You don't get those out here. No. All right. And now this table is supposed to lower too, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wing out and then turns into a bed. You say so. That's what the specifications say. All right. You know what? It looks like you're right. You're right. Actually, I was looking at, again at their brochures from the 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got a picture in there where it's down. Mm -hmm. they got the little back filler thing back there. And it's just like one yeah. giant big you know, if, bed. If you're underway too, you really... Because you don't you don't want to sleep there. Yeah. You really if that has does happen. You sort of want to be center low on the boat. You know. Keep from getting thrown around, right. beat up too bad. You guys are thinking about uh, the South Pacific. I was down there four or five years. I was in Fiji. We went to we went to Sydney, Australia, and I got some surfing buddies down there. My son was uh, competitively sailing, and and that's the first time I've been down there, and I liked it. Liked it a lot. I've never been down there myself. I've, I've actually have some uh, people from my last company I worked for. They actually, two or three of them, got together and bought a house down there. In, Where? In Fiji, somewhere on the island. You can. You can. There's a thing called. I got a good friend of mine, Bob Gillette. He's a marine biologist. He's been living there forever. He writes. He develops fisheries programs all through the South Pacific for the International Monetary Fund. Worked for the UN for a while. 
Asian World Bank, and he, he plays with some, you know, he's, he's pretty much up there. And Bob's been everywhere, and he, and he was one of the few Americans. It's called 6% of the land in Fiji is free, whole, where other people can buy it. If, unless you're not, you know, if you're Fijian, you can do it. Now, the Indians from India basically came to, to Fiji many years ago, basically right. took over commerce. There's been a big battle between the Indians and the Fijians. In fact, the Prime Minister of Fiji now is now the Prime Minister because there was a coup and they booted the Indian Prime Minister probably five, six years ago, maybe a little bit longer. So they always have these little coups down there. Right. Right? But the northern islands of Fiji, which are above the main island, I think they're set up now where there's a lot of Americans, there's a lot of Europeans down there. That might be where you're... Uh, your friends are. Yeah, I never, obviously, I've never been down there, so I didn't get to go partake in the coolness of going to the house in Fiji well, you know, or anything like that. It's a, Fiji's an interesting place. I had, I developed an ear infection surfing in Sydney. I was in the water a lot. For an old guy, I was in the water a lot. And um, and I, my ears just, I should have taken care of my ears, but I didn't. I developed, and there really wasn't a place I could go. I mean, Bob sent me down to his buddy who was a doctor, and he just gave me some stuff. It wasn't anything, you know. So the there's a lot of uh, give and take also yeah, when you're going yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, especially right. in those little remote islands like yeah. that, which honestly I don't plan on staying. I mean, I'm just going to pass on through. Right. Eventually, actually, I've got a friend of mine who lives in Shenzhen, China, which he's an American guy, moved over there about 10 years ago, and uh, that's right by Hong Kong, right outside right. of Hong Kong. <clears throat> he's been, come on out, you'll love it. It's like seven girls to every one dude. <laughs> I believe it. I'm like, oh, all right, I don't want to fly though. I, 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 when I get my boat, he's all like, "Yes, you sail?" I was like, "Yeah." What? what, what? No, it's. Uh, I think it's it just, already. Yeah, I think it died on us. I know. I was sitting there thinking as I was driving away. Damn, I should have um, brought my sunglasses or my. Turn the work light on. Oh, there you go. Try that. See that. There you yeah. go, guys. I started thinking. What I knew. So I kind of poke around. So that's the original engine. Yep. Has it ever been overhauled or any of that, I or don't is think it? So. You know what? But Jason Malcolm, the guy who's doing the work on this engine, said these Isuzus, if you take care of them, will last forever. They're basically tractor engines that were marinized when these things were put in. We have an Isuzu also in a boat up in uh, Jack London Square, this schooner we got listed. It's a big one. Let's see. I think they've replaced most of the ones that were busted. If you guys are going to do something severe? Yeah. Don't replace it, you guys. What I like to tell people to do is to sister ride up next to it. Does that make sense? Sister ride? It's like sistering a rib. So you don't lose where you're going. Want stuff like this? Does that make sense to you? No, no. Okay, awesome. all right. All right. <laughs> let's, okay, do you know what you're doing? John, do you do this? Do what? Work on boats and do stuff? Uh, no, no, I don't. Okay. Um, do, are you an electrician or anything? Do you have any background? Are you an electrician? Uh, I, don't know, I just managed a race team for, for years, and I was a uh, oh, okay. all car, car racing, motorcycles. Oh, motorcycles. Okay, okay, gotcha. all okay so oh, mechanically okay, inclined, right. yes. Okay, mechanically inclined. Boat there's expert. A, there's no. a lot. There's a lot. Of, there, but the wiring is wiring, you guys. Especially in a 12 volt system. Same thing on a motorcycle, right? Oh, uh, pretty much. It should be one of your worst nightmares if something goes wrong with it. Oh. But I'm saying is, if if you wanted to, you could actually bundle up some wire bring it, color code it, bring it to your location, okay? Transfer your stuff, you know, transfer it over, and then you can remove the old stuff. Yeah, so, okay, I see what you're uh, saying by sister right now. Yeah. Put, what you, put the replacement in right beside it and then just cut it over. Or, it, you know, take, take the wire out and then what I usually sometimes do is snip it, maybe an inch off, and then I put a tag on it, M1, and then I run down the other end, I call that M1 or A2 or whatever, so when you you know where to go, you know, when you bring the new stuff in. What kind of bikes do you guys mm, Sport bikes. Suzuki GSXRs, so this Yamaha would be, Hammers. This would be asphalt racing? Yes. Okay. Road Atlanta, Daytona, which wow. is a freaking awesome track, scary as hell. I can't figure out how those bikes still stay up when they're when they're basically laid down. That's what a hundred drivers laid down. How, does, how do the wheels? How do the how do the wheels actually keep traction? Gravity. Get really good tires on them. And, and plus the load is driving the tire down onto the onto the asphalt. Because when you I see these guys cranking over the knees and the bodies like this, 
why doesn't that bike want to go that way? It doesn't. Does it, does it, does it, does it, does the inertia want to? It yeah. does. It wants to, but you just don't let it. Yeah. Well, I mean, say for instance, yeah. you fall off, it'll just pop, pop straight up and down and just take, take off straight. That's what I'm saying. It wants to stand back With up. The centrifugal force. That's the nature of the bike. It's so upright your body, and straight. Your, your weight of your body is actually the what's driving it. Down. The counter yeah, is exactly. the counterweight yep. driving it down. Exactly. It's like a keel. And it's a uh, yeah, exactly. Under sail, the keel's exactly. gonna want to keep it from flipping, right? Basically the same thing. Only difference on the bike is, is that there is a point of diminishing returns right. where the tire, no matter how much lean or no matter what you're doing, it's, it's going to break this. loose. Right. It's going to this. Do you know why the cooling systems? Well, he's working on it. I mean, he's got the alternator and everything pulled off and everything too. Right so. there's, a, there's a heat transfer tank right there. See this little yellow tank right there? Mm -hmm. It's called a heat transfer tank. Mm hmm. Yeah, I was reading the... Uh, buddy's blog and everything about the perils or whatever on this guy and he didn't necessarily have any bad comments but he was saying it was a great boat only problem was is this guy here and he was in a hurry basically is how i interpreted what he was saying so apparently his dad went out to uh they found another one uh, 81 in uh like maryland or maine or somewhere way the hell up there and uh, his dad went out and looked at it and said that it would be all right so they got the survey done and he had a couple of leaks on a couple of the portholes. Yep, yep. Uh, had uh, his that one had the original uh, spruce spars in it. The one down, the two two boats down is just like this boat. It's got the original spars on it. So he they pulled the I guess the main out and or uh, looked at the uh, step down yep. there and mm -hmm. it was a little bit of rot down there. So they were going to try to you know that was one well, of the these projects. Are, these are aluminum. They they got replaced. Uh, in fact, Ken, the guy who's a broker at our office, actually did it. He was a rigger back then. And he stepped these and put the rigging on and stuff. So you, you have your original turnbuckles down at the bottom. Chain plates are original. Right. Those are original, but the shrouds are new. But the new means 15 years old as opposed to 30 years old. Right. So. Okay. Any idea when the last time the uh, chain plates were inspected or any of that? I think it was done during this boat when we had it out for the survey. I think the chain, I think I and have they, to ask them. So let me ask you this. On the survey thing, so, I mean, that was done two months ago? Yeah. So that with, oh November maybe, maybe some three months ago. Okay, so that would still be considered valid. Not, not really. We 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 know that the survey what turned up on the survey was this uh, rig. The point pointing out that the rig was old was uh, old. right. Yep, um, fifteen year old. Yep. I don't know what else on it because I wasn't involved in the sale. A couple of sales guys were, but other than that, the bottom I think turned out good. There was not a blister issue on the bottom. Right, yep. Um and the engine, not to be able to get the RPMs up. That was, yeah, I mean, again, that was really all they, they had talked about was just the engine mm -hmm. and everything else. To them well, like Jason Malcolm of Mechanics said he's worked on a lot of them. He said if you take care of them, they last a long, long time. Lightly used engines, probably 30 years old, but if it's got six, seven hundred dollars on it, I mean, he's, I mean, I said 12 years, I never saw this thing out of here. I know the mechanic came down and started it. After we listed the boat, I sort of got an update on what was going on right. for myself just in case I was going to show the book to somebody, that kind of thing. And um, it ran fine. Heck, I started it one day. I called Eddie. I said, can I start this thing? He said, yeah, Johnny, got to pull the glow plug. Let the glow plug go for a minute or so, and this and that, and it'll start up for you. Sure enough, it did. It's great. Brand new RPMs up. Oh, this is great. Then we pulled Put it out. Put it in and drive. <laughs> Different story. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> That's a closet. Oh. Yeah, I don't know exactly where that one piece is, but there's supposed to be a space right here. I don't know how you'd get to it, but you That's probably have I to pull all this stuff out. About getting into, to set a little generator in there. Yeah, I mean, I know that they, it was an optional thing. They had right. the, on the layout uh, that I saw off of the Choi Lee brochure, that they'd had the water heater was actually uh, behind one of these oh, right wow. here, and uh, there was an optional you know, gen set space right they there. This boat. So when I ordered it, maybe they moved some stuff around. Which, I mean, that's fine. I like, you know, lower is better on the boat, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. than putting all that weight up high like that. But yeah, I like this boat, man. This is pretty nice. It's got some room in it. And then how many, uh, have you had uh, any other folks come out and check, at, oh, check it out? We just had two yesterday. For some reason, I was the only guy down here, and I had a slew of people come through. Um... Showed them this boat. We have a little uh, Beneteau 38 over here. Uh, base boat. Um, these guys were out of Fresno. We 
you said, a guy from San Francisco yesterday. Okay? And, but the thing is, I'm letting everybody know that the engine's being worked on. I'm trying to push people back, so make sure the engine's going. I'm right. going to be able to show the boat and say, hey, look, the engine's solved. We've got the RPM engine issue solved. You know, then I'm going to be pretty confident with everything. But until this gets done, you know, it's hard to show the boat when the engine's not doing anything. You might not make it that far. <laughs> I said, you might not make it that far. <laughs> What, 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 what's your uh, what's your thought there, John? What are you thinking so far? Yeah. I don't like the electronics on it, or the wiring on it all. It's like a lot yeah, it's, of you guys, if you're really going to do something on this boat, you're probably going to have to put $20,000, $30,000 into it. Yeah, I think hell, any boat, any boat we've looked at so far, we're either spending 100 plus for it, or we're spending more money at some point. And I think I'd, it's kind of a toss up, but me, I think I'd rather go ahead and get a little bit older boat and that way I can do what I want to do to it right. instead of being locked into something. How do the sails look? You can use them, but if you're going to go somewhere, it's going to replace them. Does it have any extra sails? I don't think so. Have a dinghy? All the buttons all snap on, I like that, that's good. Teak's in good shape. Electric windlass in the up position. You got dual, uh, uh, Anchor tray things there. I can't remember what they're called. That's good. Got a couple of missing plugs here and there. I do like the canvas, that is pretty hot. Help keep it cool. Look at that, Troy Lee. Huh. Make their own damn winches too. Yeah, I don't think either one of us are what you would call master sailors or nothing. Hey, we've had people come in here that have a clue. Four, five years later. Wow. It's actually kind of funny. I was reading an article, or somebody's uh, like blog thing they had going the other day, and it was this 23-year-old kid went out and bought him a 27-foot, whatever it was, but zero, never been on a boat before. Went out and bought this boat, did whatever he was going to do to it, and then jumped on it and took off, went. I think down to the Polynesians down there or something. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, he's, uh, I guess he's got an SSB or whatever, because he's still posting while he's out there or whatever, but he had some problems on his boat, not knowing, you know, what's going on. So he's all like, hell, you know, in the cruiser's forums and shit, talking about <laughs> my, I don't remember what it was. He had some problem, something he couldn't get to work right. And, uh, no, that's right. He's, he's, uh, something happened with his, uh, the helm or whatever. He couldn't figure out how to get the emergency tiller to hook on. And I'm like, what he even doing? he even said it, you know. Well, I know I I should have did all this before I left, but I didn't. So 
Well, you know, the Polynesians traveled all over the place on, on wind and waves and birds and stuff. And they damn wooden boats and stuff. Yeah, yeah, the, the Vikings rode across. If you really want to do it, you can do it. See, these backs seem like they're high enough. I was kind of questioning it. Mm -hmm. I hope they'd be well, high enough. Well, there's cushions, too, so you're going to sit up another couple inches. There's a bunch of cushions down here on the port side. I think they go all, all go up here. And so you got, this one's listed for 54, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. What I they, if we, after we get this engine done, you guys, we had this thing locked up in, at 50. Those guys, those, those couple out of San Diego, they yeah, right. boat. really nice people. We just couldn't get these guys. To, the owner of the boat, he kept saying, "No, I just want to sell it." And the kid, the brother, kind of, "No, no, we want the engine fixed." And I would too, you know. Yeah, that's what he was saying. He went down basically his whole little <clears throat> process or whatever, and said that he offered forty-seven. Mm -hmm. The dude came back at fifty-two, and right. they all met at fifty. I think they met at fifty. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, everything else was good. He didn't post the full survey up. He did the part about the uh, with the engine when you had the uh, engine surveyor come out, mm -hmm. and uh, I just posted his comments up on all the hoses and all the stuff that would need to be changed. Ex right. Explaining the RPM issue, mm -hmm. uh, eighteen hundred and forward, and we were fourteen hundred and forward, eighteen hundred reverse. It would go right. To. Exactly. Exactly. I was. I thought it was fourteen both ways, but it maybe it had been eighteen in reverse. But it just we could not get that sucker going. Through trial and error and squeezing the owner of the boat to try to spend some money, he's finally, you know, he finally got the injectors ordered, and the injector pump. Yeah, that would be nice though to be able to uh, pull up right beside that other guy. He just moved his boat over to uh, Pier 32 down there in Chula Vista. Oh, the uh, the Navy kid. Yeah. Okay. And uh, bring this boat down there and say, hey, look, we got part it right beside him. You know what? I'm sure he got the boat for a good price. Oh yeah, I think they. Uh, which I don't know exactly. He didn't ever say how, exactly how much he paid for it, but he did post the full survey for that particular boat on mm -hmm. his site, and uh, the surveyor said eighty-three thousand. Wow. So, but I mean, it had electronics. It had. See, you this, know. this would be if you got this boat for forty-seven, forty-eight. He could probably offer less than fifty. Now, you know, it's been sitting around a while. Um, I think these guys want to move it, and. Um, then, you know, with all those doing work for the engine, maybe you have more money, I don't know. Um, then if you put money into it, you have a pretty solid boat, you know, in terms of electronics and stuff. And I'd have the rigging, sur we had a rigging survey, and the rigger said, you know what, if you want to take this place someplace, you need to replace all the shrouds and everything. If you want to go to the South Pacific. Yeah, that's, sailing around here, I, mean, I don't think it's a problem. Yeah, I mean, especially where, where I'm at up there, it's never too bad from uh, my experiences. Right. But these, these, these turnbuckles are original. These guys here. This stuff's been replaced right here. So what you're looking at, probably 10, 12,000 bucks for a rig? Probably. Might be cheaper if you, if you, we've had rigging costs on J46s go from 11,000 to 16 to 17,000 to replace rigs. There's rig works down in San Diego. Mm -hmm. They're really good. They're probably the best. Rig works. I think they're probably rig works. They'll probably give you the best price. If you got to that point, what we do, Jim, is we'd say, well, these guys we work with, you know, Rig Works Holman Sales. There's a rigging outfit in San Pedro that Dennis Choate uses. It's also very good, so we get competitive prices right. on stuff. Um, we had a Swan 42 that needed a new rig. We were selling it. We knew it needed a new rig. Um, had, do, had done two trans packs. Did the last trans pack in 2009, and when you do a trans pack, you have to be fully inspected. The rig has to be, everything has to be up. If, if there's anything, they won't let you go. Kind of like you're trying to get on Daytona. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Safety exactly checks. Right. Everything's got to be wired and everything. Everything's, everything's got to be just right. Exactly. It's a, that's a really good analogy. And the boat passed muster then, so it was only a couple years later. But, uh, we know, we had the rig survey. Uh, you know, the rig was there, but the rig work guys looked at it and they said, shoot, this is a great rig. So that helped sell the boat. Right. You know, it was still in good shape. All right. You know, you get, um, so if you guys were actually going someplace, you'd be four on, four off. Some people do, you know, at night, you depend six on, six off. Which something. actually, I'd bring somebody else too. I've got another one of my friends who's been itching to have three people itching to yeah. go somewhere. So uh, on them long distance cruises like that, yeah, the more yeah. the merrier. The more the merrier. In fact, the Transpac race, uh, seven, eight people on a, on a J, on a, 42 foot boat they just hot bunk it right you know i worked offshore for a while we hot bunked when we had a 
we had a bunch of Chevron engineers on the boat looking for oil out here back in the 70s. And I was sort of low man on the totem pole, so I had to hot bunk with the, with the navigator. You know, I 